If you're making a game, you're likely going to want to have some basic combat. So today we're going to be making a weapon, a input system, and a target to actually hit with that weapon. It'll be the very basics you need for a combat system, and then in the next video we're going to go back over this and make it a modular system. We'll be working over one of my previous projects here that I've already made with the ledge grabbing mechanics. You don't need to have the ledge grabbing implemented to have this working, but I already have the animation blueprint and stuff set up in this project. If you want the finished project file with the basic combat already implemented, there's a link down below in the description to my Patreon where you can download it to either follow along or just dive a little deeper into the project. But let's get started with making a sword. So we're going to start by making a new blueprint class, which will just be a normal actor, and we'll call that sword. For this sword, we're going to add a static mesh. For that static mesh, we're going to use the sword that I have made for my own game, and you'll see that it's likely a fair bit too big, but we'll be scaling it appropriately in a moment. Then we're going to go over to your player skeleton, and opening that up, you're going to find the bone for the hand that is going to hold the weapon. So, in my case, I think that would be the left hand. We're going to right-click on that, and we're going to add a socket, and I'll just call this weapon L for weapon left. And just in case, I'm also going to make a weapon socket on the right. Now, in your character blueprint itself, we're going to add a child actor. This allows us to put another actor within this actor. And we're going to make that as a child of the mesh. Because that way we can come over here on the right hand side and find the parent socket. And we can say one of the weapon sockets. And here we can choose the child actor class. In which case we can find sword. And if it doesn't show up, there's probably an issue with the transform here. Since it's now in a socket, this is the local offset, and we need to have that at 0, 0, 0. And then we can see, yeah, this sword might be a, a tad bit too big. So, if you've made a mesh that is way too big, we're going to go back into the sword, first and foremost, and we're going to change the scale here to something like 0 0.01. And that's still a little bit too big, but now we can start fine-tuning it a little easier in here. So let's make that 2... Maybe 1.7, that should be about right. And we can see that it's stuck the socket here, but the socket is at the same location as the bone, which is not exactly what we want. So coming back to our player skeleton and finding our socket here, we're going to push that a little bit more into where the hand itself is. Now we can see that the sword is actually located in the hand. Turns out though that I chose the wrong socket, so we're going to change this to the right hand socket. And then from here you can rotate this in whatever direction you want and whatever works for the animations you're using. So something like this should work fine. And that's how we get the sword onto the actual character. But now the sword itself is going to have to have a little bit of functionality. And to do that, we're going to go back into the sword blueprint and we're going to add a box collision. As a child of the static mesh, we can put it in the right place where we want to have it and we can say the box extent in the Y needs to be a little longer because this needs to cover the entirety of the blade and preferably a little more even than that. And then we can maybe like thin it down ever so slightly. And this will be the actual hitbox of your sword. This is the thing that's going to look at overlapping. And if it's overlapping an enemy, then it will deal damage to that enemy. So let's make an enemy that we can actually hit. We'll make a new blueprint class. And that will be a character. And we'll call this just enemy. And I'll put that in the contents folder so that we can easily find it. I'm just going to give this a skeletal mesh for the normal unreal engine money rotate it to be at a proper rotation and all that stuff and give it an animation blueprint for many as well just so that we aren't hitting nothing and in here we're going to make a variable for the health there's a lot of 
other more complicated ways to do this which are a lot more scalable and design friendly but for now we're just going to go for a single health variable on the enemy then back in the sort we're finally going to do a little bit of coding because we're going to go into the event graph and we don't need a begin player or an event tick but on actor begin overlap what we do is we cast to enemy and then the other objects will go into the object for the cast now any enemy we make in the future should be a child of this enemy blueprint which you can do by just right clicking create child blueprint class so this would be enemy one any blueprint that is a child of this will still be able to be cast this way so this is a check to see if we're overlapping with a enemy if we are we can get the health and then we can set the health as well to make this a little bit more variable what we can do is create a variable for damage on the sword which we also set to a float or an int if you only ever want to deal like whole numbers of damage you can just do an int instead that's fine and then when we compile that let's set the default value for damage to like five use that to set a new health value so when our sword overlaps with our enemy we're going to set the health to being the current health minus the damage of this weapon which effectively just subtracts the damage from the health then we also probably want to give the enemy a little bit of knockback so we're going to make a knockback variable as well and this is a little trial and error uh we're going to just set this to like uh 15 or something and in order to actually apply the knockback we need to get the character movement and in that we first and foremost stop movement immediately so that it stops moving and then we also add an impulse to that and the impulse should be a vector which is the rotation between your player character and the specific enemy that has just been hit which we can find relatively easily by the find look at rotation node the start should be the get player character and from there we can get actor location and for the target we also get a actor location but instead of getting the player character for that what we do is we just use the other actor then we multiply this by our knockback force and put that into the impulse for our knockback and we set our velocity change to being true and before we forget it let's set the enemy health to something like 20 so it takes four hits to kill the enemy now let's put one of these enemies it doesn't really matter which one into the map and see what happens when we just try to walk around and nothing good happens so if that happens with you as well you want to go back to your sword and your static mesh and we're just going to disable the collision for the mesh itself and now we can properly test this out so if we now overlap with this we can't really see anything happening yet and that is likely because the knockback isn't strong enough but we want to see whether or not we're actually dealing damage first and foremost that's the most important part here so going back into our sword after our set health, just for debug purposes, we're going to add a print string and we're going to print out the new health value there. Because we want to know, are we even dealing damage to begin with? And it seems like, yes, in fact, we are. We just don't have any death mechanics set up yet. So the HP value just keeps going into the negative numbers. It will also note that I can damage them without actually doing an attack. We'll get into that in a moment. So we want to increase the knockback, so we're going to multiply this even more. You can multiply it before or after turning it into a vector, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but let's multiply it after, just for convenience sake. And change this pin to a float by right-clicking it. Convert pin into a float. And let's just try multiplying it by 100. There's a little something there. That, that's a, definitely a start, but it's still not doing too much. But at 200, that's looking a little bit more like it already. Now, what can help is knocking them up into the air a little bit as well. And to do that, we're going to uh, get a up vector. And it's important that we use the math and not the transformation ones. Because this just gets the up vector for the entire world. 
and we add that together before we multiply and that should increase the effectiveness of the knockback by at least a bit and we can see we can knock them about a little bit now so that works well enough for now now for ease of this tutorial we're going to do something that's not entirely efficient but what we're going to do is we're going to check for the hp in the event tick usually you would want to make a custom event when you're damaging the enemy if you have gone past a health value of zero and then kill it what we're going to do instead is something easier but much less efficient and that is we're going to check if our health is simply less than or equal to zero on every frame and if that condition is true then we just simply destroy this actor Again, do be aware that this is a horribly inefficient way of doing it and that I'm only doing this for the sake of making this tutorial a little bit more condensed. Because now we'll be able to see if we damage this guy a couple of times, he disappears, he's dead. Which means there's only two things left to do. Number one, implementing the actual attack animation. And number two, turning off and on the damaging box because we don't want to be able to damage things unless we're actually doing a attack let's start with the letter in the event graph here we're going to make a custom event or a function whatever you prefer the difference in blueprint isn't that relevant and we'll call that sword box state something like that over here at the right hand side we can add a input to that and that's going to be the new sword state, whether it's on or off. And then we simply just get the box component here. And then we just set generate overlap events to be equal to that sword state. And we make sure that the box by default in the collision options has generate overlap events set to being false. This way we can turn it off and on from our other objects such as our third person character in which we're going to do the exact same we're going to make a custom event a sword on state we're going to make a input for a bool and then we're going to get this child actor reference and that we're going to cast to sword if that doesn't show up you can always turn off context sensitive here and it will show up if you're having any trouble with that and then since we now have cast to the sword, we can call that event sword box state. And we can just pass through that new parameter that we made into the sword state here. One last little thing uh, we skipped over is the child actor we put on our player is a child actor component. To actually cast to the sword, we need to get the child actor variable in that. If we cast that to the sword, we will see this warning disappear. Which finally gets us back to the animation blueprint, where we're going to be adding a attacking animation. And the way we're going to do that is the attacking animation should be able to be done from the idle and walking state, but also from the jumping or the falling state. And we can make a bunch of different connections here, but what we can also do is we can make a state alias, and we'll call that allows attacks. And then here at the right hand side, we can choose which state this is an alias for. So this is a IR walk, jumping, falling, and why not? Let's say we can also do it from hanging and jump. We just can't go into attacking when we're hanging on an edge. Now, any transition I make out of here will be able to be done from any of the states that I have selected. So let's take one of my sword attack animations. I'm just going to drag in sword attack one here. And we're going to call this state simply attack. And we can drag that over to the attacking state. And once the attacking state is done, we're going to go back into our idle or walking state. And we can do that by selecting this transition and ticking the automatic rule based on sequence player in state to being true. Now what we need is a bool value for the attack transition. So we made an attacking bool and we can use that in this transition. To set the attack but now the issue is whenever we enable this this is just going to be true and what's going to happen is we're going to do an attack then go back into the idle walk the attacking bool is still going to be true so we're going to immediately attack again so whenever we 
get into this state, we need to also reset the attacking bool. Luckily, if we select a state, we can say here and the animation state events, enter state event. Okay, we can just give that a name, uh, reset attack bool. And now if we compile and we go into the event graph for the animation blueprint, we now have that available as a event in here, which allows us to set this back to being false. Then going into our attacking animation itself, it's a very simple sword swing. We want to have the damage box enabled right around here. So what we do is we hover over this track with the one on it, and we can add a notify, making a new notify, and call this enable sword. Then we go all the way to the end of where we want the sword to be enabled, which is a handful of frames later. Then we add a new notify, new notify, and we call that disable sword. Now that we have made those, if we go back to the event graph in our animation blueprint, we can call those as events as well. So enable sword and disable sword. We simply just cast to our third person character blueprint for both of those. And since we have an event on here, what we can do is we can say sword state. This will be enabling it. So our new parameter will be enabled. And for the other one, it will be disabled. And then we just have to connect these up. It's very important that you actually set this to being false. I kind of forgot to do that. This is recorded after the fact while I was bug testing because there was a bit of a bug. And that will enable the damage box and then disable it again through the animation timings so that we don't have to worry about messing around with timers for every single individual attack in code. And for the inputs in our third person folder here, in our input folder, we have a handful of actions in here and then our input bindings. Let's open up the input bindings. And if we open up the mappings, we see we have move, jump and look already set up. We can just copy and paste one of these over and call this input action attack. You can open it up. It doesn't really do too much because the way we actually implement that is in the assets for the input mappings themselves. So we add a mapping for the input action attack and we just simply, let's give this left mouse button for now. And now that we've done that, we can find a place here somewhere to put the attack and we simply say input action attack and that gives us an event for when this is triggered so when we trigger this we can set a variable on here let's say character attack to being true and once again there's a bunch of different ways to then disable this one back to being false the important part is that we link this bool to being the same one as this one in here so when we Reset the attack. The easiest thing to do is just do another cast to the third person character and also get our character attack here to be set to false as well. Then the last thing we need to do is we actually need to set this attacking bool in the animation blueprint to every frame be set equal to the character attack bool that we've just made on our blueprints. And now we'll see that if we just run into this guy without attacking, it doesn't do anything. If we press the attack button, we play the attack animation. And if we hit him during that attack animation, we can see that we are now actually attacking him. And we're dealing damage and he dies. That's the basics of a combat system. Now, there's a lot more to be added to that depending on what game you're making. Next time we're going to dive in a little deeper and make this a modular combat system that allows different animations to be triggered at different times in such things as a combo. Because a combat system with only one attack gets pretty stale pretty quickly. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page.